Welcome to another video um, in this series of the scales problem by Scholar Hall Education. Um, in this video, we're now finishing up by creating our final hill climb optimization algorithm. We're going to be doing this in the class that I'm calling my class. So uh, don't f don't worry about that class right here. We should have a scale solution 2004 and whatever class that you're you've created your main in. In this video, we're going to be finishing up the scales uh, problem implementation. So we're going to start creating our hill climb method. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what needs to be included when creating the hill climb method and you're going to have a go at it. And if you can't, um, you know, give it your best shot and if you can't then the answer will be displayed after. So what we're doing in our hill climb, right, is we are getting our, our, our random binary that we've created. We are assessing its fitness We are then creating a small change. We are oh, I second one. Uh, we are then um, assessing the new fitness of this uh, uh, binary string that's been changed. And if the fitness of the small change is smaller then the fitness of the old um, uh, binary string, then we're going to take on that new binary string, right? So, but what we're going to look at that as is if the small change fitness is larger than the old fitness, then we are going to keep the old fitness, right? So I've given you somewhat of a pseudocode there. Give it your best shot, and um, what we're going to be doing is looking at outputting the fitness of the um, of our final solution, and we can have a look at um, you know system dot print lining the actual final optimized solution that we get. So uh, have a go, and I'll be right back with the solution. All right, so hopefully you guys had to uh, got to have a go at that, but this is our algorithm for our random mutation hill climb. So what we're doing is we're getting the length of our uh, weights array list, which is passed in through here. And we're also passing in the number of iterations that we want our um, optimization function to go through. I've created this um, variable called nFitness such that we can tie that to uh, our final fitness and then print it out at the end. And we're creating an instance of our scale solution we're cr called sol which will create a random binary string for us. Then what we're doing is getting a for loop from zero to the number of iterations that we specify. And we're assessing the fitness of our solution here, right? Our random binary string. We're passing it through the sold scales fitness. So the scales fitness was created in the scale solution class and we're passing in our array list. What we're then doing is what this string old sold dot sold dot get solution does is it will if we go back to our scale solution what we need to do is create a method called get solution which will return our binary string and I'll come to the reason why we're doing that in a second then what we're going to do is we're going to make a small change to that solution right so this is the solution up here and we have also got an old solution here so I think you can almost understand where we're going to for the, with this now. And we're going to create a new fitness of that now changed solution. So the binary string that we've applied a small change to, we're creating a new fitness of that. And what we're saying is if the new fitness is larger than the old fitness, then sol.setSolution old sol. We also created a method called setSolution where we're just saying that our binary string is now equal to sol, right? And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to set our solution to our old solution again, right? So we're creating our old, so we're, we're storing a copy of our old solution, our old binary string in old sol. And what we're doing is if the new fitness is higher than the old fitness, then we want to revert back to the old fitness, the old solution. And we're setting the solution as the old binary string. And it's going to keep going. And then what I did here is I said end fitness is equal to old fitness. So each time 
uh, we get a better fitness with our uh, old fitness. At the very end, after all the iterations, we're going to print out the end fitness right here. And then if you want to print out the optimum input, what you do is you so just do sol.printline and in your scale solution, you do have a method called printline that will just system out the print line, the entire solution for you. So just to recap, when I use the word solution, I am talking about the binary string that we've created. We created a binary string, we assessed its fitness, we created a copy of the old uh, binary string. We then created a small change to create a new binary string. We assessed the fitness of that new binary string. If the new fitness is bigger than the old fitness, i.e. if it's worse, then we're reverting back to the old binary string and then we're printing out that end fitness. And if we run this now by just going over here, going to our main, and what we can do is we can create a new array list. Uh, I'm just going to call it my new array. You can new array list. Integer. Create the array list. Uh, let's go over there. And then we can do my new array dot have, and we can just say one uh, one. And the values I want to put in here are 10, 4, 3, 2, and 1. The reason why I want these values is because the this uh, optimization algorithm should completely balance out the solution to put the 10 on one side, the 4, 3, 2, and the 1 on the other. So what we're going to run this for is let's just say 1,000 iterations. And let's uh, pass our array list through here. So my new sorry my new array. Okay there we go. Fantastic. Oh yeah we just need to change that to double of course. Oh let me change these to Right, so let's just run that and see what happens. Fantastic, we've got a final fitness input of zero. And we can see the optimum input, it's assigning the 10 to the left hand, right hand side and all of the rest of them to the left hand side, creating a perfectly balanced solution. Right, what I will add is that on Scholar Hall, you can find the 1000 primes TXT on, um, under the uh, scales problem uh, section. And that's the TXT file right here. What I want you to do is go into your Eclipse workspace, go specifically into your project, not into the source folder, and just paste the thousand primes text document right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use a uh, method that we have from our CS2004 class called um, read number file to access that file and work with a thousand prime numbers. So it should look something like that, right? So we've created a new array called my array, and we're just doing cs 2004read number file and then the name of our file. You don't have to put it directly into the, uh, the directory, the file that we're working with with our project. You can just call, you can just create a, a directory path in here, but I just find this much cleaner and much easier. And then we can just change this to my array. We can now run this for something like 10,000 iterations. So let's just give that a go now. Right, so we can see that this is now given the optimum fitness that we can possibly get from this. You cannot get a uh, fitness better than that for prime numbers simply because they are prime numbers. And the most balanced scale you can get is with a difference of one. So that's, um, well, that's pretty much the optimum success that we can achieve using an optimization algorithm for this specific use case. So we can see that our random mutation hill climb has worked perfectly, exactly as intended, 
on the thousand primes txt and that's all you need to know for the um, scales problem and we can look at simulating and needing another time thank you very much for watching